I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Welcome. This story is being brought to you by William Jevning and is being narrated by me, Jim Sower. The name of this story, Two Tales of the Yeho. Curious legend of the Kentucky mountains, four or five versions of this curious and strange legend, come into my collection over a period of about six years, 1948 to 1954, from an isolated region of the Kentucky mountains. At first I did not know what to make of it, but having also collected a few versions of The Bear's Son, story minus the half-bear, half-man introduction, I guessed that this was the introduction now broken away and told separately. It now appears to be a distinct legend, since Dr. Archer Taylor refers me to the long search for American versions by Mr. Rudolph Atrochi. And now that I reflect on this item, I realize that... And now that I reflect on this item, I realize that it is not unique to Kentucky Mountain folklore. During my youth in these mountains, it was not unusual to hear a rumor of some half-wild man, naked and hairy, being found in the woods, living close to animal state. This kind of Romulus Remus legend seems to stick in the minds of the folk, but how this particular legend made its way into eastern Kentucky is a mystery to me. The following version was taken down in pencil in 1950 from the lips of Lee Maggard, who lived in a small cabin on the south slope of the Pine Mountain Range near the small lumber town of Putney, Harlan County, Kentucky. He had heard it on Maggard's Branch, Leslie County, Kentucky. The Yeho Once there was man out hunting. He got lost, and after a while, he began to get hungry. He came to a big hole in the ground, and he thought he would venture down into it. He went down in there, and he found that the old Yeho lived in there. There was deer meat hanging up, and other food piled around the walls. The man was afraid at first, but Yeho didn't bother him, and he went toward that meat to get him some. The Yeho walked over and looked at the knife and said, Yeho, Yeho, a time or two. He cut it off a piece of the meat, and he started eating it. Well, the man stepped over to the middle of the pit and took out his flint and built him up a fire. And the Yeho watched him and looked at the fire and at the flint and said, Yeho, Yeho, again. The man put his meat on a stick and browled him a nice piece and started eating it. The Yeho watched him and acted like he wanted a piece. The man cut it off a piece of the briled meat and reached it over. And the Yeho commenced to eating it up and smacking its lips and saying, mm, Yeho, Yeho. Well, the man lived there with it a long time, and they got along all right. After so long, there was a young'un born to him, and it was half man and half Yeho. And the Yeho took such a liking to the man, it wouldn't let him leave. He got to wanting to get away and go back home. One day, he slipped off, and the Yeho followed him and made him go back. Went on that way for a good while, but he picked him a good time and slipped away. This time he got to the shore where there was a ship ready to sail. He got on the ship, and he looked, and he saw the Yeho coming with a young'un. It screamed and hollered for him to come back, and when it saw he wasn't going to come, why, it just tore the baby in two and held it out one half to him and said, Yeho, Yeho! 
he sailed on off and left it standing there. The version that Dr. Taylor refers to in my book, South from Hell for Sartan, is called The Origin of Man. Another version was given to me by this teller's grandson. It has the same title and contents, except that the Yeho has six children and tears them all in two and throws them after the embarked man. Another text, similar to the one given above, was accidentally erased from my tapes. The following text was recorded from Joe Couch, Appalachia, Virginia, in 1954. He had heard it from his people while he lived in Perry County, Kentucky. The Hairy Woman One time, I was prowling in the wilderness, wandering about, kindly got lost, and so weak and hungry I couldn't go. When it began to get cool, I found a big cave and crawled back in there to get warm. Crawled back in and come upon a leaf bed, and I dozed off to sleep. I heard an awful racket coming into that cave, and something come in and crawled right over me and laid down like a big old bear. It was a hairy thing, and when it laid down, it went chomp, chomp, a chawing on something. I thought to myself, well, I'll see what it is and find out what it's eating. I reached over, and a hairy-like woman was there eating chestnuts. Had about a half a bushel there. I got me a big handful of them and went to chewing on them, too. Well, in a few minutes, she handed me over another big handful, and I eat chestnuts until I was kindly full and wasn't hungry anymore. Directly, she got up and took off and out of sight. Well, I stayed on there till next morning, and she'd come in with a young deer. Brought it in, and with her big long fingernails, she ripped its hide and skinned it. And then she sliced the good lean meat and handed me a bite to eat. I kindly slipped it behind me, afraid to eat it raw, and afraid not to eat it, being she give it to me. She'd cut off big pieces of deer meat and eat it raw. Well, I laid back on the other pieces she gave me over as she eaten hers. She was going to see that I didn't starve. When she got gone again, I built up a little fire and briled my meat. After being hungry for two or three days, <laughs> it was good cooked. Yes, buddy. She come in while I had a fire She come in while I had my fire built, briling my meat, and she run right into that fire. She couldn't understand because it kindly burned her a little. She jumped back and looked at me like she was going to run through me. <laughs> I said, uh-oh, I'm going to get in trouble now. Well, it was cold and bad out, so I just stayed another night with her. She was a woman, but was right hairy all over. After several days, I learned her how to brile meat and that fire would burn her. She got shy at the fire and got so she liked briled meat and wouldn't eat it raw anymore. We went on through the winter that way. She would go out and carry in deer and bear. So I lived there about two years, and when we had a little kid, one side of it was hairy and the other side was slick. I took a notion I'd leave there and go back home. I began to build me a boat to go away across the lake in. One time after I had left, I took a notion I'd slip back and see what she was doing. I went out to the edge of the cliff and looked down into the mountain, and it looked like two or three dozen of hairy people coming up the hill. They were all pressing her, and she would push them back. They wanted to come on up and come in. I was scared to death, afraid they's going to kill me. She made them go back and wouldn't let them come up and interfere. Well, I took a notion to leave one day when my boat was ready. I told her one day I was going to leave. She followed me down to my boat and watched me get ready to go away. She was crying, wanting me to stay. I said, no, I'm tired of the jungles. I'm going back to civilization again, going back. 
when she knowed she wasn't going to keep me there. She just grabbed the little un and tore it right open with her nails, throwed me the hairy part, and she kept the slick side. That's the end of that story. This is the end of the story. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.